Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. What we do here on Getting Sketchy is either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. And of course, we sprinkle in some art instruction too along the way. And this is all meant to be fun. I mean, that's the name, Getting Sketchy. Besides the fact that Ashley and I are pretty sketchy dudes, we also are creating sketches for you. So these aren't finished drawings. They're a little bit looser, but tonight I'm gonna try to do my best to create a more refined drawing. And uh, Ashley's sitting right over there. How are you doing, Ashley? Doing great, Matt. Thanks for asking. I hope you guys are doing well out there. And if you tuned in last week, you were able to watch me um, struggle through portion of an automobile, a car. Um, it was a drawing that I'm pleased with, but I was pretty nervous about. Um, I think uh, the wheel of possibilities puts a little extra pressure on us. So if you weren't here last week, I spun the wheel for Matt, um, for his subject matter and for his uh, medium tonight. So let's see what he's going to be using. Yeah, this season, uh, this is actually our eighth season of Getting Sketchy. Um, what I don't know what episode this is. This is be my third drawing. So this would be episode five. Five. Yeah, we're this okay. is the middle drawing of yeah. the season because oh, I've right. done okay. two, yeah. and this will be your third. So this will be the fifth. Five out of ten tonight. All right. Yeah. So um, we'll have eleven episodes this season. The last episode will be us just reviewing the drawings that we create. Now this season we're doing something. I uh, actually mentioned the Wheel of Possibilities. Uh, there's actually two wheels, and uh, here's a little taste of, I, I really need to just record it each week and then show you the week before, but this was the first week we spun the wheel. So we have one wheel for the materials and one wheel for the subject matter. And at the end of tonight's broadcast, I will spin the wheel for Ashley uh, to, so we can see what he's going to be working with next week and what subject matter he's going to be working with as well. And after we've done one subject matter or one medium twice, we retire that for this season. So last week, Ashley spun the wheel and I got still life mm -hmm. and mixed media. And this will be my second mixed media drawing this season. So mixed media is off the board going forward. Now, the media that I'm going to be using tonight our colored pencils, markers, and a little bit of gouache. And we're gonna be working on yellow green paper. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But if you enjoy this kind of thing here, make sure that you subscribe to the channel uh, because you'll be notified when we go live like this. And also when I post new videos to the channel, which I do rather frequently as well. So make sure you subscribe. And if you like this video, make sure you like it as well. And if you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, then you should probably check out the membership program over at the virtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of drawing and painting uh, media and subject matter, weekly live lessons. So what we're doing here on Getting Sketchy is quick and loose, but uh, the live lessons, we create finished drawings and paintings from start to finish live for you, of course. And uh, just, just like we do here on Getting Sketchy, there's a chat box, you can ask questions. Uh, there's also weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, which is inclu included in the membership program and a year long curriculum for visual arts teachers. So if you wanna check out the program, there's a link in the description description below. And if you want to check out three of a course videos and ebooks for free, just a little sampling of what uh, is offered as part of the membership program. There's a link in the description below for that as well. Now, if you have a question or comment tonight during tonight's broadcast, of course, you can ask a question or make a comment in the chat box here on YouTube. If you do have a comment or question that's directed specifically for me or Ashley, if you put it in all capital letters, that'll help Ashley see it a little bit easier since he's running the chat box tonight. And Slippy Wheels has given us a super chat, which gives me the opportunity uh -oh. to show you our uh, new thing here. <laughs> our new graphic. Uh, if I can get it to work. Yeah! yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, every time. Uh, somebody does a super chat here like Slippy Wheels did. Thank you for that, uh, Slippy Wheels. Um, we are going to have that little thing play, and I'm going to mix it up. This I threw this together uh, earlier, just real quick, but it's a lot of fun. So if you do uh, donate to us, I guess we'll say, um, then I will play that little thing if I can find the button, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you have anything else to say before we uh, dive um, into this one? I'll just say I uh, saw in the chat that Buddy has COVID, so I'm sorry about that. Oh, and I hope you're um, not feeling too bad. 
and you can stick around with us as long as you feel like it. Yeah, Buddy Buddy is with us uh, on the live lessons. That's right. Every week. Every week. Uh, dedicated and, and there every week. So, Buddy, um, feel better real soon. Um, I, I know we've never talked in person, but we feel like we kind of know you uh, a little bit. So, uh, so I hope you feel better real mm -hmm. soon, and I hope that your run-in with COVID is a relatively mild one, of course. Mm -hmm. And the same is true for anybody else out there that's not feeling. And I would well. also um, just say that uh, I would welcome our guests from Texas, Australia, Connecticut, the UK, New York City, Minnesota, the great state of Virginia, Detroit, Vancouver, and from wherever else the rest of you are at right now. Absolutely. And again, I know that you guys are joining us from all over the world. Some of you stay up really, really late to see this show live. And some of you, of course, um, are getting up really, really early to, to watch this show live too. And we really appreciate that. So, uh, and if you're, if you're, if you can't get up really early or you can't stay up really late, of course, this is recorded and it will be broadcast on YouTube as soon as we're finished here. Uh, or it will be available on YouTube as soon as we're finished here. All right, that's enough blabbering. I'm ready to start drawing. It's time to draw. So let's switch over to the main camera. All right, um, we are going to be working on an interesting surface tonight. Mm -hmm. I've got this yellow green paper here, and this is Canson Color Line paper. And uh, this paper has a little bit of tooth associated with it. I've done a little bit of work with colored pencils on it, and it is actually fantastic to work on with colored pencils. Um, I'm going to go through the materials in just a minute, but uh, a photo reference that we're going to be working from is over here on the left. It is a lime slice, and I think last week I said, uh, I don't think I'm going to do fruit because <laughs> I, I, I did, uh, you know, I, I, the wheel told me I, I needed to do <laughs> still life and um i think i said last week i wasn't going to do fruit uh, well, i will i retract that <laughs> i am going to do lum i'm uh, a lum which i think is a fruit i'm sure somebody will tell us that it's not a fruit but i'm pretty sure it's a fruit it's, it's a fruit uh all it's right got seeds inside <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to be doing a LOM, and uh, that's the reference that we're working from. If you want to have a copy of this reference for yourself, you can do so. You need to go to the YouTube channel. To get to the YouTube channel, you might be watching this video, but might not be on the YouTube channel. To get on the channel, you have to click on my face uh, down underneath the video. That will take you to the YouTube channel. While you're there, make sure that you subscribe, and then click on the community tab, and uh, you'll see that photo reference there. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can download it and uh, have it there for yourself. Um, but it's going to be up here on the screen during tonight's broadcast, so uh, you, you can use it for comparison purposes that way as well. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be using a combination of media here, thus mixed media, and I'm going to be using a combination of media that I feel like works really well together. And that's going to be alcohol-based markers. I'm going to be using uh, Prismacolor Premier alcohol-based markers. And I'm going to be using Prismacolor Premier colored pencils with those as well. We're going to use the markers as a base application. Well, I'll put those really high up there. Um, we're going to use the markers as a base application that will work somewhat as an underpainting. And then we'll apply the colored pencils over the top to build up uh, additional contrast, additional depth in the color. The markers, of course, are going to save us a bit of time. Now, I, mm -hmm. I know somebody's going to ask, can you use Sharpies? Uh, Sharpies are a different type of marker, um, and they're going to behave differently than the markers that I'm going to use. The markers, these alcohol-based markers are semi-translucent, so you can layer applications, and um, they almost like you would with watercolor, and you really can't do that with Sharpie markers. And um, so they're going to be a little bit different there. Um, and that's true for water-based markers as well. Like if you've got those Crayola markers sitting around, mm -hmm. they're going to be a little bit more opaque. A little too strong. Yeah, compared to these alcohol-based markers. Um, and if that's the case and you want to skip the marker part, that's fine. You can just use colored pencils if you want. Uh, I do have a colorless blender here. I might use it a little bit. A colorless blender is basically just a the wax colored pencil uh, but it does not have any pigment in it. So that is just the wax binder basically, and it'll allow me to move some of the colored pencil material around on the surface and also do some mixing as well. Um, so I might use it, might use it just a little bit. I've got a variety of colors already picked out. I'll try my best to name the colors, but honestly, when I'm doing a drawing like this, I usually just grab and go, and I'm not really thinking about the names of the colors. I know that some of you like to match the colors exactly, but it's always good practice to kind of get in the habit of learning how to make your own decisions about your own color choice decisions um, and trying to match them yourself without knowing every single 
color name, but I'll, like I said, I'll do my best to name the colors. I also have a bit of gouache here. Gouache is opaque watercolor. Um, you can definitely substitute this with acrylic. I'm only using white. This is zinc white, and I'll be using it to put some of those sparkling highlights there at the end to make this um, lime slice look like it's actually wet. Yeah, it um, looks like uh, some of our guests are talking about the different uh, materials they may use instead of what uh, you're using just due to um, you know what they have available. Yellow mm -hmm. paper is a suggestion possibly or maybe just working with straight watercolor. Um, sure, yeah, you could use watercolor standalone and then let it dry and then work with colored pencils over that. You just have to wait a little bit. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, a point. lot of those are great options. Yours yep. doesn't have to be um, just like Matt's material selections to end up with a with a great artwork. Now we did have a couple of questions. Um, okay. One was from Undertow99 um, asks, are there any uh, opportunities for like one-on-one -on -one lessons or Zoom classes? And um, no, the virtual instructor offers um, you know, services that are different than those. A lot of videos and some critique opportunities. Matt, do you want to take that? Yeah, we do the live lessons and that's going to be the closest that we come to one-on-one -on -one -on -one instruction. <laughs> like for here in the YouTube, um, it, with the YouTube live stream, there are a ton of you that are here, but in our live uh, streams, the live lessons that are part of the membership, it's like a class. It's like a normal size yeah, class. Yeah, it's like a normal size class. Uh, so it's really a whole lot easier to ask questions and get your questions answered. Sure. Um, there, there is the opportunity to ask questions on every single video that is published on the website. That Well, every single video that's part of the membership program in the on the website. Um, and that includes all of the courses too. So if you have a specific video, a question regarding what, what is taught in a specific lesson, there is a, a, a section where it's called the lesson discussion section where you mm -hmm. can ask questions and make comments. And uh, other users also chime in and uh, give their opinions as well. There are the weekly uh, critiques that are part of the members minute. So if you have artwork that you wanna get feedback on, obviously not every piece of artwork that's submitted is critiqued, uh, but if it's photographed well, and if the artwork is executed to a level uh, that is appropriate for sharing, then it might be featured as part of the Members Minute. And that gives me the chance to critique your artwork. And that's pretty close to getting one-on-one -on -one instruction. Yeah, and you can learn from those critiques even if it's not your artwork, because we're all dealing with the same set of elements and principles trying to create compositions out of them. Yes, absolutely. And that's the whole point of critique. It's, it's beneficial to the person who submits the artwork, but it's also also beneficial to everybody else who watches the critique. Um, mm -hmm. It's the same thing that happens in an art classroom in a college uh, environment, of course. All right. Thank you for that. And Matt, we had one more quick question from Brent Does Art. All right. He said um, earlier in the chat, lime green paper with a lime on it sounds hard yeah. to get the values right. No, it's it, it's actually a little bit of trickery because um, when you work on gray paper, you, you know, you start with the middle value. So it's a little bit easier to create a broader range of value when you work on gray paper. Mm -hmm. Well, since we're working on, well, it's not really lime green, it's really more yellow green. Um, so the colors we're gonna be adding, we're not gonna be adding some colors that are close to this, but uh, since we're starting with this color, it's gonna actually help us create the illusion of the color that's in the lime. Okay. So uh, it's not going to harm the value range. It's actually just going to help us with the colors a little bit. Um, it, it'll work out. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be going for really a monochromatic <laughs> color scheme here yeah, tonight. Yeah, monochromatic. Um, and I do have my H graphite pencil that I'm going to start with. And I also have a kneaded eraser. So um, those are the other materials and tools that I'm going to be using. Uh, but that's a good, good question uh, about the values. It would be very difficult if I was drawing on black paper with a black drawing media. Well, you know, then we'd have some a lot problems. of times I think that a lot of times we choose a colored ground that contrasts with our subject. Like, uh, but, mm -hmm. but in, in here you've got one that really harmonizes with your subject. Yes, and that's because, partly because these markers are translucent to yeah. a certain degree. Not all of them. Like, I, I picked one of the most opaque markers. I see. Here, but um, a lot of them are translucent, so some of the color of the paper is going to show through. In fact, if I made a mark with this marker and this this marker right here they're they're different colors you can see that they're slightly different but they would look exactly the same on this paper um mm -hmm. because of the translucency and because of their similarity to the paper but 
I think that's it. There. This is yeah. my drafting brush, if you're wondering what that is. I use this when I use colored pencils um, to wipe away the colored pencil junk that comes off. All right, I think we're ready. Are we ready? Yeah, we I think have any so. Other I think questions? we're ready for our timer. Um, I don't. I don't think there's any questions. I think maybe there was a question not in caps that I had missed. So type it again in caps if you need to get that answered. Okay. All right, let's go. All right. Um, so I will start the timer here, and of course we will. We'll have 45 minutes to uh, complete this drawing. So I'm going to start here with the H graphite pencil and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the edge of the paper to find out where the corner of my lemon lime is going to be. I'm sure I'm going to call it lemon like 50 times and <laughs> then I'm going to come down here and find out where the bottom part is going to be and that's cl actually close to the middle of the picture plane maybe a little bit further. A little point there. Just, yeah. Um, Marlon Davis says is it okay to use only colored pencils and white paper? Of course. Yep. Use, use what you've got. I, yeah. I know that the materials I have here uh, might be considered fancy by, <laughs> by some people's standards, um, but really, they're not that. It's not that fancy. Uh, but and you know, if you don't have gouache because it's a less common uh, paint to have laying around the house, um, but you have acrylic, you could use the acrylic at the end of the process in place of the gouache that Matt's going to yeah, use. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'll work well over colored pencils, also. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just need an, an opaque white and some people like to use those gel pens. Oh yeah. I, I have never really, uh, jobbed with the gel pens too much. Um, I think it's our generation. Well, cause my <laughs> students use them to great effect yeah. and I order them for them, but never choose to use them myself. I, I just go for the gouache. You know, I don't think it's our generation. I think that the... <laughs> Uh, I don't think the gel pens work as well as gouache. Yeah. And I think the gel pens are convenient, but don't work as well. So. Well, that's true. They pack fine in a pencil case when you're traveling around you know, school from class to class. So maybe in a pinch. So if you got a gel pen, um, you can try that. All right. So you can see I've drawn the outer contour here. And now I'm kind of working my way on the inside here. And... I'm going to make these lines a little bit lighter in just a minute, so I don't have to get too now, worked you, up. Now, you're going to use the Prismacolor markers, right? Yes. And um, Sue asks, are those markers strong smelling like Sharpies? They're not really. They they do have a smell, um, but it's not as strong as a Sharpie marker, but it, there is a smell. Yeah. It's not like those. It's a similar smell. It's not like those metal cased markers with the rings on them from the 1970s and 80s. I've got a few of those and um, I still use them. Boy, do they smell up a classroom fast. All right. So just getting an idea of where that rond is. I guess that's the rond. I'm sure I'll, I'll call out all the parts to this the rind, rind incorrectly. The rind. Is that what that is? Rind. Is that peeling. I call it the peeling. I think it's, is it the rond or is it the peeling? Gonna, I think it's the rond. I'm going to go with peeling. All right. Undertow 99 or 999 asks, how thick is the surface? The paper itself? I think so. I think that's the question. The uh, question is that's how, a good how question. thick is the surface, but I'm pretty sure thick is the right translation there. Yeah. I, it's thick. I don't know what the weight is, but I would estimate it to be probably 120 pounds. That's what I was going to say too, about if, 120 pounds. Yeah, if you if you have an understanding of the weighting system for papers. So typical drawing paper is like 70 or 80 pound, and that refers to its thickness. So this is about 50 percent thicker than that. Yeah, and the um, it, what it is is it's the weight of a ream of paper, so mm -hmm. 500 sheets of paper. What the weight is is the weight of the paper, and obviously thicker paper weighs more, so um, that's where that comes from. Edie asks, is it all right to draw the contours with colored pencil instead of graphite, please? No, nope. um, nope, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. <laughs> just, yeah, you can do that. Just be careful um, because, you know, just go light. colored pencils are not very forgiving as far as erasing. And a few um, stray marks um, sometimes can add character to your yeah, drawing. Yeah, definitely. So I've given an indication of where the shadow is. And, of course, this initial sketch doesn't have to be perfect uh, because no one... Well, except for you guys, it's going to see the photo reference. <laughs> um, June I'm says get... it is a rind. Ah. Like a watermelon, I guess. Yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. Ha, ha, ha. 
The wrapper, I call it the wrapper. I usually don't (laughs) get any of those. I'm I'm usually wrong about everything. So um, when it comes to that kind of stuff, so. I will take my small victory here. Um, EV series, I, does the marker smell at least give you a buzz? What, no. what, did, what, what are you trying to get there? Are you, <laughs> <I don't, laughs> what kind of, my, Edie, you need those 1970s markers, I can tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, these, won't, these aren't quite that strong. Um, Henrietta asks, will Copic markers work? Yeah, definitely. Same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Copic, Copic, whatever, whatever you want to call them there. Um, Excellent markers. They're also uh, alcohol-based. So, All right. Now, this edge up here actually comes up a little bit higher. Brent does art says that it's because it's a citrus fruit that it has a rind. That's okay. The, so that that's uh, thanks for that classification there. That'll help me keep keep my vocabulary straight in the future. So if it wasn't a citrus fruit, it like would be like an, an apple. apple. Right, yeah, an, an apple. apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say okay. that that is skin or something you know all right uh first color here let's see let's start with a little bit of lime peel <laughs> now um i'm how laughing that? how about that i'm laughing because well, i am look who's uh, also wrong <laughs> i i am using lime peel here for instead of lime rind yeah instead of lime <laughs> well i'm using it for the inside part Okay. Um, I'm going to be using. Yeah, that's a good color match. Actually. Strokes that flow. Do you have a white piece of paper over there? Um, I don't actually. I just wonder what that color looks like. How how it looks on white compared to, you know, the it, yellow green. That it will look it. different for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. I, if you want to grab a piece of white paper. There's some behind me on all of those shelves. Oh, here's a sheet. So we can see the difference here. Just a scrap. Okay, so it really is about the value. Just makes it a little darker. Yeah, this color so, is not actually not that different, different yeah, on this paper. Yeah. Undertow asks, do you have as well um, links to drawing, mat- drawing material drawing sets? I don't believe so. Like a uh, link to a drawing set? In different places on the website, yes. Okay. Uh, on on the on post where we are discussing materials, or I am going through the materials that I'm using, um, I could add some of that stuff there on YouTube, I guess, in the description. But mm-hmm. maybe just some links for materials we use commonly, I guess. Uh, well, no, it'd be different for each yeah. video, but. Uh, but yeah, there there are posts where I discuss materials and and um, and in some of the lessons I list materials, especially if they're materials that you you kind of have to order. Yeah. Now, um, somebody earlier in the chat had mentioned Tombow markers, and Claudia asks, "Any thoughts on using Tombow markers?" I haven't I, used Tombow markers. Yeah, I'm not familiar with Tombow markers. I know they make a great eraser. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if, you, you know, any brand of marker that you want to use for this kind of combination of media, you can. You just want to be looking for the alcohol-based markers. Because you can see I'm going back over the top of areas, and it's making the color a little bit more intense and the value a little bit darker. It looks more detailed, too, where two strokes overlap and you get that thin sliver of darkness, you know. It just looks like a little extra detail. And you can't really do this kind of stuff with the Sharpies or or those Crayola water-based markers. They have their place, mm-hmm. but maybe their their places on posters <laughs> and things like that. So still sticking it here with the lime peel. And look at how much time this is saving from doing the colored pencils. You know, colored pencils is a time-intensive mm-hmm. medium. And the markers save us a lot of that time. All right, I'm going to go ahead with this lime peel. I'm going to go right along the edge of the rond here. Let me give it a little bit of variety. Looks like there's some of that yellow green in there. Uh, 
All right, Knights of Lavender has a question. Can you use gouache paint over graphite drawings for highlights, please? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, you know, graphite is a little bit uh, sort of dustier or more smeary, I guess, than colored pencils are, um, but you can still use gouache right on top of that. And I've had some students use the gel, you know, the white gel pens on top of graphite. I don't have any luck with that. Um, so I would stick with the gouache. Yeah, for me, it just feels like the gel, I've got one right here, but me yeah uh, the gel pens just are kind of inconsistent yeah and with the gouache Could be the and a brush that I've been using you have a lot more consistency and that's important mm -hmm. all right uh, now let's switch over here let's uh, grab a little bit of Under uh, dark olive green yeah. undertow says I gotta go to the game but we'll get a membership. All right. Well, I guess that's uh, bittersweet, right? It's bitter because we're losing you, but sweet that we'll maybe see well, you over at virtualinstructor.com. Must be a really great game. I'm not sure. Um, Edie says, is the marker lime scented? No. No. Unfortunately. But I do. I think we've talked about it before. I do have a set of of Mr. Sketch scented markers from the 1980s that came to my school in a box of donated art supplies. They're like brand new. They've never been used. <laughs> the scent is so strong in every one of them. And uh, occasionally, when nobody's in my classroom or after school, I'll get out my set of Mr. Sketch scented markers and I'll pull out that blueberry marker and take it out and smell it. So, just one of my guilty pleasures i hope everyone got a good mental picture of that because <laughs> i definitely did i particularly like the blueberry but sometimes i'll get the red cherry out and smell that one too <laughs> you gotta cleanse the palate in, in between sniffs you know how your you know how your sense of smell is connected to your memories um I yep. sm when i smell those markers it's like going back in time it's like a fountain of youth for just a few minutes i'm eight years old again apple green here <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit more of an intense green right where these two colors meet. All right, we've got a question that also has an answer for us. Um, USF Girl 07 says, does the 92 pound and the 184 pound versions of the color line have the same texture or tooth? I can't answer that question, but I think... I can extrapolate from your question that Matt's probably using the 92 pound paper. Yeah, and if this is 92 pound paper, it is the thickest 92 pound paper I've ever come yeah, across. Yeah, it is it, thick. It is thick, yeah. But 184, I don't know if it makes it all the way up to that. So I'm going to guess it's a high quality paper, 92 solid pounds. All right, this is a little bit of sure the sunburst yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of color here, just a little bit of. Uh, variety in the color you know green is created by combining yellow and blue so a little bit of yellow in here is going to make this feel maybe a little bit more natural because we're going to get a little bit more uh, variety in the color and mm -hmm. that's going to create a little bit more of a sense of depth in the color so that yellow is not real obvious in the reference in fact it's not even there in the reference but um, it is just going to add a little bit more depth Jen says that I might need a support group and suggests, and uh, Jan suggests <laughs> Marker Sniffers Anonymous. Hey, if Ashley was not, if Ashley was it, didn't even tell us he was sniffing markers, I, yeah, he'd still need a support group. <laughs> so I don't think the sniffing of markers has anything to do with the that's need. Just, uh, it's just a uh, need for support. Yeah. Um, right, Jack has a question about the markers. When they, um, when they dry, does the value change? Maybe slightly. They might slightly get a little bit. A little lighter. Um, a little lighter. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go for a little bit of 20% warm gray. Okay. And uh, this is going to make some of the values a little bit darker. So this is going to okay. add a little bit of variety. Do those markers have two tips? They do. Okay. And one them. is a chisel tip and one is a the point. Uh, a point. Sort of a point tip. Okay. And um, I will use both in this drawing. Brent does art says my Prismacolor set has only has only two greens, none of which you've named. <laughs> <laughs> um, Prismacolor uh, set of markers or yeah, I, I'm not sure. It just says Prismacolor set. pencils. He may be, Brent does art may be using all colored pencils. Well, one thing I like about the Prismacolor uh, brand is that the markers 
and the the pencils have similar colors. There's so there's a lime peel, obviously, in pencil form too, mm-hmm. uh, along with the marker version. Dancing Nana says we all need support. It's true. Yeah, especially in today's world. My Nana's a dancer as well, and she's always been there to support me. Pull a few streaks up here. We've got a little bit of color that's kind of pulled yeah, this, out. Uh, this lime is it's just a slice, but just it has slice. a lot of interest because oh, yeah. of its irregularity. You know, it's got that tail on the end, and it's kind of kind of bumpy and jagged on the edge that's typically straight. All right, with this uh, 20% warm grain, I'm going to go ahead and define the shadow, the cast shadow here. Oh, Slippy Wheels with a super chat. Uh-oh. Let me find the button. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Looks like I'm about to eat the timer. <laughs> we need, like, something to fly out of our mouths while that's happening. Butterflies or colored pencils. Butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look, I switched over to the chisel side. And this is, again, the 20% warm gray. We'll come back to the shadow later, obviously. So that's the gray? This is the gray. Well, wow, that paper is, is really coming through. A warm gray. Yeah. It, well, it's it's not necessarily the paper coming through. It's the translucency of the markers. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, now, we need to have some lighter value on here. And instead of choosing white, I'm going to use a 10% French gray. And uh, we're going to go ahead and define the lighter areas of this rond and to get some contrast down here. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason why I'm not choosing white is because it's going to, it's going to look kind of like it's white. But the reason why I'm not using white is because we've got those really strong white highlights that are going to make this look like it's wet. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't want to get too close to that last, last block of your value scale. So we're not quite done with the markers just yet, but um, we are ready to start working some with the the CPs here, the colored pencils. And I'm working pretty quickly and loosely here initially. Um, GP asks, uh, which kind of paper are you using right now? And it's Canson color line paper. And we think it's the 92 pound, which is um, pretty, still pretty heavy. It feels like a piece of, a thin piece of poster board, but has a good tooth, a good texture to it. Yeah, it really does have a, a texture that is not that dissimilar from, uh, what is the paper I'm thinking of? Um, oh, Stonehenge. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not that dissimilar from Stonehenge paper, which is paper that I love to work on it's with colored pencils. you say that because people are always looking for alternatives to Stonehenge. Always. Yeah. Does the Canson color line come in white? I don't know the answer to that, but that I would, would not be surprised that if would it be did. potential substitute for Stonehenge. Maybe well, I don't know if media. it's a substitute because th- yeah. this paper does not feel like it's cotton. Right. It does it feel soft like that, but the texture is similar. Does that make sense? Yep. So I don't want to mislead anyone or have somebody say, Hey, you said this was just like it. And, it, and it's not. <laughs> but similar. Uh, that paper is great for accepting colored pencils, and this paper is also great for the same reason. Seems like there's a lot of opportunities for lots of layers. Enrique says, how about substituting one of the removed subjects in the wheel of possibilities with the human figure? Hmm. Well, we could the, the human figure, we've got people on there. And so people, people could be a human figure. It could be a portion of a figure or a portrait, I right. guess. Right. People, people is on the wheel. So I did, a, I did a drawing of a person like four seasons ago, and uh, it was a dancer, I think. And that's the last mm-hmm. one I've yep. done. So I would like to do some figure drawing pretty soon myself. Who knows? Could be next week. Well, maybe you'll get people. Okay, so it looks like Dick Blick does carry white sheets of the color line at uh, 19 by 25 inches. 
If anybody would like to try that as a as a as a substitute for the surface of Stonehenge, if not surface texture, just the surface texture. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. What are we going to do next? Let's uh, start making a little bit of variety in the value uh, and color here on the inside part of the lime. Let's start by making some of this bottom part a little bit more lighter and more yellow so there's a little bit more variety and then we'll go the opposite way and start making the outer edges a little bit darker we've got a lot in there already at 20 still have uh, 24 minutes to go we haven't quite hit the halfway point of your allotted time okay <laughs> i haven't looked at the clock but i've been frantically working mm -hmm. frantic i know this color uh, by the way is yellow chartreuse so just to put a little bit more emphasis on chartreuse, yellow chartreuse. Because chartreuse is really like a yellow-green, right? Yeah. So yellow chartreuse is yellow, yellow, green, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yellow, 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 green. Like south, <laughs> southwest. Yellow, yellow, green. All right. Uh, all right, now let's go here with a little bit of lime peel. Yes. It's the lime peel this pencil. This is the lime peel pencil. Lime peel making its second appearance. Well, this time in pencil form. In colored pencil version. The colored pencil version. And now I'm going to start putting a little bit more pressure on the pencil and start defining some of these shapes a little bit more. Lime peel is really kind of our base color. I, when I use colored pencils, I like to kind of think of sections as having a base color and then mm -hmm. kind of colors that accentuate that base color. Now we did this with the marker initially. Lime peel was the color that we started with. You you broke out that lime peel and uh, Jack Northert says, add some tequila now with salt. Well, maybe, I'm not sure our maybe, audience is maybe all the of, the, of the age of <laughs> tequila drinking age. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are, but maybe not everybody. All right, so I'm just looking at the basic shapes right along the top edge and making those a little bit darker, a little bit more limony. <laughs> Lime like. Lime like. Living life in the limelight. Margaret mm. says she doesn't mind saying that her watercolor lime looks tasty. Mm. All right, well, don't eat it. That's great. Resist the urge. <laughs> but that's great that it's looking so good and you're doing a watercolor, huh? Very good. And Susan asks, do you have any courses on plein air art? And there are a few posts, I believe, on plein air painting. Yeah, and um, basically it's not necessarily – There, there's a course that is called um, – Pastel Landscape Mastery, and the whole course is about landscape drawing with pastels. Um, and what you can do is take what you learn from the course and apply it to plain air painting. And when plain air painting is just basically painting or drawing on location, so you're going to use the same the same skills that you would use in the studio. You would just use them faster. Right, faster. In, fact, in you know, following along with these time drawings that we do is great training for plein air painting because yeah, plein that's air very artists yeah. are always working against a limited time frame, the changing of the light and the shadows. And so um, that's right. You know, the, the knowledge that you acquire from the land, from the landscape course is applicable whether you're working in a studio or on location, but the temperament required, I think, for plein air work um, is something that comes with practice and knowing what to avoid early on, what you can what you can get away with leaving out. How to um, keep the bugs out of your painting. Right. Yeah, right. How to keep the bugs out of your painting and what to do when the wind blows hard. So I, um, I hate plein air painting because of wind. That's it. Just the wind. It drives me crazy. Just the wind blowing my, the back of my canvas. It's rattling. The, 
I get wet paint on the side of my clothes when I'm trying to walk back to the car and the wind blows. So um, wind ruins plein air painting for myself. But I've done I've done some of it. I do like to draw outside. I'm um, just not so much painting. So. Okay, let's take some of this lime peel and actually apply it to the peel. <laughs> the rind. The rind. Brent does art says I stand corrected on my value statement. It looks great. Well, thank you. And we yeah. haven't even really started to push the contrast yet. You wait till we get you some of these wait. shadows you in just here. Wait. Um, but hopefully you can see how the paper's making it easier. I'm not. I'm actually not having to work so quite so hard with the colored pencils. If I was working on a white surface, boy, I'd be really get, having a workout here, uh, trying to to make these colors harmonize. Well, it wouldn't be that hard to make them harmonize, but um, it would be a little bit harder to get the depth and color that I'm getting because I because there's already a color on the paper. There's already a color on the surface. So there is already some sense of harmony kind of baked into this. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, it's a little bit lighter yellow green up here. This is chartreuse, not the yellow chartreuse. Just regular chartreuse. Just regular chartreuse. Time. Just the regular yellow green. <laughs> um, and I'm actually gonna use this Let's see how this translates. There's these little highlights on the back side here. So yeah, I think this is the color that I want to use here. Yeah, that's one of the things that's nice about this picture is that reflected light that uh, reveals the texture of the rind. And it's really strong back here on the back edge. I'm kind of working around some of those uh, little darker shapes which will make darker in just a minute, darker still. These are the little spots that mm -hmm. happen here. Let's see, I got 18 minutes June here. June says, I'm doing more of a lemon on my yellow paper. And Enrique <laughs> says, great drawing or painting, great anyway. Thanks. Um, all right, so let's Bring a little bit down here, and then we're going to start making things darker. Really bumping up the contrast in just a minute. You know, there's been a discussion going on in the chat about copying another artist's work, and then, um, and then, what does that mean for you? Can you sell it? Can you sell it as your own if it's a copy of somebody else's um, artwork? And um, you know, you, you you really can't sell it, but. Uh, um, like Jan mentions to Slippy Wheels, if you're doing artwork just for yourself, it doesn't really matter. You know, you're not going to get in trouble because you're not earning any money off of it. So there's no money to to give somebody somebody who might own those rights. Um, but I have done some copies before of famous artworks, and these are artworks that I guess probably aren't even copyrighted anymore because they're so old. Um, I did a copy of Starry Night years and years ago, you know, by Vincent Van Gogh, and of course nobody's going to think that was mine, right? It's one of the most um, recognizable images on the planet. Um, but I did go ahead and put Vincent Van Gogh's name on the painting and my name on the painting. So I think that's if you're just doing a copy and you want to acknowledge that, um, and maybe it's for somebody this was for somebody and they did pay me for it of course i can't give half the money to vincent van gogh although i would um, but he's long since passed away um, but in any case you could just put the original artist's name on the artwork if it's a cop if it's a painting of a painting yeah and i'd be real careful doing that kind of stuff yeah uh you know if you see a painting or something that you like online and then you just decide that you're going to create a copy of it and and you think hey i'll just put their name on there that might not be a good idea no no only for dead artists no, i wouldn't i wouldn't do that with any living person it'd be kind of kind of weird all right i'm going to add a touch of blue here this is skylight blue and i'm going to add this to the light part of the rind and I, I would say that that painting I re referenced is a, was a commission for a certain person. You know, it wasn't an artwork that I had um, done that to and then hung in a gallery. I would never have, have hung a Vincent Van Gogh copy um, in a gallery for sale. 
but but it was for a certain person that just really loved that picture and they wanted a version of it that had texture you know had brush strokes in it so, so i did one for them all right uh next let's grab a little bit of pale sage and this is kind of where we've got some of those lighter bands close to the center we still have it just just wait in just a moment we're going to make things really pop it's not quite ready yet but we will in just a minute make things right because matt's got he's got a more of shadow work to do yeah and yes yeah, another me another medium oh to slippy meals oh slippy <laughs> say slippy meals <laughs> again thank you so much so let's see the photographer sells a picture of a tree with rights i was wondering if i bought it can I draw the tree and put my name under there? If, now, you, if before, it's a photo. Before Ashley says yeah. anything, let's yeah. let me just preface this with the fact that we are just <laughs> we just have a YouTube channel. Uh, just uh, we're just doing a show we're just here. Just a couple of sketchy guys. Who yeah, are not we're, we cannot give you. Do not take not what we advice. say as advice, legal advice. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. You are responsible for what you do. Um, all that stuff. Now, okay. <laughs> what Slippy Wheels is talking about, you and I actually do that with, okay. pho with photographs from Pixabay all the time. Yes, but I would be careful um, if you're taking that work and then selling it. Um, I'd be careful with that as well. Yeah. Uh, if you're do yeah. using it for educational purposes like we are, that's a little bit different. Now, you, uh, some photographers will totally give you the rights to do that. Very absolutely. Day. You just have to ask, and, yeah. and they'll email you back, and then you've got that in writing. And I've had students um, over the years, high school students, um, send you know emails to living photographers asking them if they can use a portion of the artwork or their composition or their photograph in a, for a drawing. And they'll get emails back that give them permission to do so, and then they do it. And uh, we don't get in any trouble, and we enter that artwork and contests and shows and the kids win stuff so um, you just have to do it right you know and, and ask for permission sometimes or make sure that the rights have been sold um, along with the image itself all right we're ready to make this thing pop all right so i've got uh, some olive green up here and uh, now we're going to start pushing some of these darker values and go right along the edge of the rond here and this is going to get Oh, it's yeah, going to be shocking how dark it's going to yeah, be. It is yeah. now. Um, these are the uh, the soft core Prismacolors, right? Not the very thin. Yeah, the hard, the Premier pencils cores. are the ones with the softer core. Okay, and those are the ones that I'm using here. Uh, the very thins are great too. They're really better suited for like fine details. Mm -hmm. But uh, some people like to use them uh, for the entire process too, so that's fine too. I don't want to cover up all of this, these lighter areas that I made up mm -hmm. here. So well, these darker gonna... marks will enhance those lighter areas. I can really see the texture coming out now. And we're going to go even darker still. <laughs> so uh, get ready for that, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you've, I think you're doing great on time. You've got it still... Almost 12 minutes. Well, we still have the cast shadow, and yeah. there's still some parts on the inside of the, the lawn that I'd like to make a little Just bit take, darker. We'll take it as far as we can. Far and, as then, we can. and then we have uh, the highlights that we need to add with the gouache, too. So it may seem like I have loads of time, but in my mind, I don't. In my mind, I'm starting to freak out a little bit. <laughs> But I'm starting to freak you know, out a little bit in my you, mind all the time. I, I feel like this um, <laughs> this season is is more challenging. I feel like the wheel of possibilities. I'm starting to look at it as the wheel of limitations. Well, I you think know, that that's a little pressure. I it's think limitations. Uh, having limitations is important for creativity. You know, um, Salvador Dali used to talk about that very thing. Well, Setting boundaries for yourself, things you won't do. Yeah, I think that you, you're forced to be a little bit more creative when you have to think within certain parameters. If, mm -hmm. you, if everything is wide open, uh, then it, it's, 
I paradoxically a little bit more limiting because there's so many possibilities. It can almost be crippling, you know, making like when you have too many, too many options and a decision to make. Yes. All right. All right. Now we're going to grab a little bit of night, uh, 50, 90% cool gray, and this is going to make things even darker here. This may look like it's black, but it's not. It's a cool gray. Maria is using Karen Dash Luminance 6901, and they're great, she says. Yes, they are great. They are, uh, they are also wax-based pencils. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I would say that the Luminous pencils are the brightest pencils that um, I've ever used. They're, they work exceptionally well on black paper. Well, they're well-named then. It must be chock full of pigment. Yeah, they're really they're really bright. They're that might not work for everybody, you know. I I feel like uh, the polychromos pencils are 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 definitely dull in comparison to the the luminance pencils, but mm. the prism the polychromos pencils are fantastic too. So uh, they're just different, you know. So it's it really depends on how you like to work and how you like to use the colored pencils. And also what surface you like to work on too. All right. Now when we get that shadow down, we can go back and put some highlights and maybe a little bit of slightly darker value in some areas on the inside of the lime here. Let's go ahead and put down a little bit of that uh, cast shadow back here. So I'm going to go with 50% um, warm gray. No, I'm going to start with the 70% warm gray first. And there is a stronger shadow that kind of drops right behind here. Yeah, there's like a double shadow there, isn't there? And comes down bit. right across here. Enrique asks, do you think it is possible to do a realistic painting of this photo just using watercolors? Definitely. Yeah, now, why it'll not? It'll take more than 45 minutes um, because you're going to have to wait sometimes for layers to dry. But it's very doable. Of course, you'd be working on white paper probably. And um, there are some really, really tiny white highlights that uh, Matt will address later, but has to be addressed in the very beginning of a watercolor painting. So um, if I were going to do this with watercolor, because those little shiny white highlights are so small, I would use some sort of a masking fluid um, <clears throat> before I even started with the watercolor so that, uh, so that those tiny little white spots were preserved from the very, very beginning. So just a tip there. Um, Frisket is a name is like a brand name of a masking fluid, um, but but uh, there's other other brands, different art suppliers make masking fluid for watercolor, and it's just a way of protecting a place on the paper from getting color on it that needs to be white at the end of the painting. Okay, just to explain what I did here real quick, um, I put down first some of that. Um, 70% warm gray, and then very quickly I did the 50% warm gray over the top. Wow, so, it, so it's still wet, so there was some mm -hmm. uh, blending that happened there. And then I did the 20% uh, warm gray. I think it was 20% warm out gray on the again, edge. out on the edge. Yeah. Now I'm going in with the 90% uh, cool gray colored pencil. And we're going to make this shadow even stronger. Oh, yeah, that 90% is dark. Yep. Not black, mm -hmm. but a dark, cool gray. And this will allow us to create a little bit of a transition here. So with a light. Sandra touch. Kane wondered, uh, what size is the paper that you were using, Sandra? I believe it's five inches by five inches. Yep, that's correct. And Cynthia um, asks, is there a place on the community members forum to share the getting sketchy drawings? Uh, no, but you can make one. Uh, you can create uh, create your a thread own, for that. Yeah, you can create any. Uh, and she's talking about uh, on the website. Oh, okay. Um, you can 
create your own subject over there and you can start your own thread i, I should say not subject yeah. but your own thread create a thread uh, on the that's the that's the forum on the website uh, at the virtual instructor that's a great and idea the, the forum's completely free too so you don't have to be a member to use the forum we'd like you to be a member <laughs> but you don't have to be this is a little bit of that warm gray we put a little indication of the shadow up here at the top and i'm hustling now um, there is like five minutes left. Five minutes. And no matter how do... fast you move in the beginning, it always feels like you're running out of time. Now let's see. I'm just going to make a few little areas inside of this lime a little bit darker. And I'm using uh, moss green for this. Well, Slippy Wheels and Sandra Kane like your drawing so far um, better than the reference. Oh, and you thanks. know, the background's a little lighter in the drawing, and so uh, maybe it provides a little bit more contrast well, against the lemon. This is, this is a good example of how uh, your photos of your art and the way your art translates on camera is sometimes different. Because this is, I photographed this lime on the same paper that I'm drawing. How on. about that? Yeah, that's how different. <laughs> Just goes to show the camera you that cameras, can read things. You know, cameras are there, they kind of filter what they see. And then I warmed up the the photo, so that? I made it even closer to yellow than how the camera captured it initially. That's a great um, great reason to uh, remember to practice drawing from life, not just from photographs. You know, try to match what your eyes see. Your eyes. Or just alter the colors to make your drawing more interesting than yeah, the reference. Yeah. Which is what we're attempting to do anyway here. Um, all right, let's make it a little bit darker underneath here. Let's see. Um, Andrea asks, how can you make the markers work so seamlessly with colored pencils? Well, the trick is to put the markers down first and also work quickly with the markers so that uh, you're minimizing the strokes that show up. You can so, still so see they, in this. They bleed together a little bit. Yeah. So okay. I tried to work that shadow as quickly as possible to create a little bit of, um, so that the colors bled a little bit into each other. But what happens if you, the markers just aren't going to ever be as precise as the colored pencils. Mm -hmm. So that's why these two mediums really work well together because they make up for each other's weaknesses. The colored pencils are slow, but, uh, you know, highly controllable and they have great contrast but uh, the markers are quick but they they're lacking that that strong contrast and um, that ability to get detail so i like to use the markers first and then use the colored pencils over the top you can do kind of what i've done in a couple of areas here where you've gone back in the to areas to uh you know enhance it a little bit with the markers but really it's markers first Colored pencil second. All right, now All right. I'm going to use a colorless blender here. And while you do that, I've got a couple comments to read. Um, Rhythmic asks, can white markers substitute white pencil? I'm not sure. You know, your white markers may be like paint markers and could be too solid. So I would try to, I would test those out over some colored pencils on a scrap piece of paper before you try it in your artwork and see if uh, you like the way it looks. And uh, Jesse says, put the highlights down. Do it. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Even if, even if I have to use a little bit more time, I've yeah. got two minutes left. you got two so. minutes. The highlights aren't going to take very long, but I'm going to use the colorless blender here to just pull some of this colored pencil shadow up a little mm -hmm. bit to make that a little bit smoother. And then I'm going to go back over the top of these darker marks that I placed because you can kind of see the tooth of the paper on these marks because I used a light touch. But with the colorless blender, I can quickly work them in and eradicate that tooth, or not eradicate the tooth, eradicate the texture that's produced by the tooth. And uh, that's gonna kind of keep the lemon, the lime, <laughs> there I go, I said lemon. Uh, that's gonna keep the lime looking like it's the correct texture and not. Sweet Pea asks, are you gonna use gouache to highlight? The answer is yes, and Edie um, so mentions right after that, I didn't even know white markers existed. Yeah, I don't know about the white markers. I, you gotta be talking about paint markers. I'm familiar with the white paint pens, and uh, if it's a small enough white, you know, small enough tipped white paint pen, you might be able to use that in place of the gouache that Matt will use for his highlights. Thank you. 
There we go. All right, let's let's break out the gouache. It's time for All a right. gouache party. All right. I'm gonna use that little piece of paper that you brought over. Yeah, here. there you go. Um, and just put a little bit of gouache here. Just use that for a palette. And I'm gonna use it without any water. So I'm just gonna use it thick. If you if you use it thick, it won't be um, translucent at all. These will be really bright little highlights, and you can always thin it out with some water to make them milky or or um, semi-transparent. And it's always weird at first when you start putting these on. It yeah, seems... those first marks always feel like they don't belong. Yeah, it seems like you're doing something wrong. So just just stick with it. Once you get enough little highlights dancing around the lime, that will uh, they'll feel like they belong there. Undertow is at the game, but still watching. Nice, awesome. Yeah, who what says game you are you going who says to? Says you can't do two things at and once. And it didn't right? take you long to get to the game. Are you playing in a game? <laughs> I hope not. Was it halftime? He's got a basketball in one hand and a phone in the other. I don't know. I'm just guessing. All right. So if you don't have gouache, <laughs> uh, you know you can always use the gel pen. But I can I tell you what I've seen people use a gel pen and create similar effects. But I just find that I have better luck. Yeah, I have using students gouache. to do a great job with the gel pen. But I, I get like you said, it's inconsistent. You know, I get I'll make try to make marks that won't appear, and then marks that get a little blobby. Maybe it's the gel pens. I, I could just be the brands that I've uh, used so far. It's a soccer game. Undertoes at a soccer game. Or is it a football game? Uh oh. Oh, uh -oh. super girl. chat. Yay. A numbers girl. Yay. Thanks again. I'm always impressed by what you get accomplished. Well, thank you, numbers girl. Yeah, thank and you. And of course, I'm thanking you on Matt's behalf since I've not accomplished anything in the last hour myself. <laughs> All right, just a couple more of these guys. A couple more highlights. Just making it feel nice and fresh and juicy. Freshly cut. And now, you know, ideally, you'd want to have a little bit of variety in there. Maybe have a little bit of blue in some of these highlights. Yeah, but. I was about to mention, you can always add a little color into your white because highlights aren't necessarily pure white sometimes there may be a little bit of pink or green or blue in there so but um i'll use the gouache a lot of times over colored pencil for whatever the small sort of lightest value is even if it's not really that close to white as long as it's got white in it all right and time's up time's apparently. up so uh but i'm pretty much finished yeah with i this. think i think you I could, met, uh, met your goal there in 45 minutes yeah it's it's close enough there so um, even though I said I'm not going to do fruit, um, I'm pretty happy that I did do the lime here. I think it's a yeah, good like subject, um, and especially on this paper to show you guys that uh, we don't have to work on gray paper. We don't have to work on white paper or black paper. We can use colored papers. And this is actually the second... When I did the last mixed me mix media drawing, I worked on blue cancer mutants paper. You know, I I use colored paper, but I that. always choose very very muted colors. You know. Yeah. But this is pretty bright. Um, yep. I might I might try some some work on a brighter brighter ground myself after this. You've inspired me. All right. Uh, well, you know what time it is. First of all, it's time for me to move all of the stuff out of the way oh i'm and, getting nervous uh, rotate around and grab the wheels i'm getting nervous we're going to spin the wheels and i'll find out uh what i've got to think about drawing for you guys and with you guys next week all right so let's see here the wheel let's, of limitations let's hide some things here <laughs> first of all we'll have the timer and we'll have the reference and then uh, says great job matt remember to like the video oh, thank you it's yeah, always yeah. a good advice for all of you out there yeah, please if like, you like the video this, if you like this kind of stuff make sure you like and subscribe of course all right uh let's see here i'm going to do some moving around here okay so i'm going to move this out of the way and there we go <laughs> all right so uh, our first wheel here is the subject matter mm -hmm. um, and our second wheel here and we is... have not yet had architecture people or animals is that right 
those three have been uh right haven't had those yet we have all. not done pins ink and marker so uh, we also haven't had pastels haven't had or, pastel or charcoal well you did had colored pencils i had yeah, color pencil, had charcoal right. mixed media is off the board and landscape is off the board everything else is fair play now uh, which one would you like uh, to, okay, to let's, spin first? Okay, let's spin the medium or the media wheel first. All right. So you have done graphite already yep. and uh, colored pencils. So yep. if graphite or colored pencils are chosen, then that will be it for either one of those this season. All and right. I've told you guys in the first, I guess the first week that I was rooting for graphite every week for myself. But I wouldn't be disappointed with charcoal either. All right, we're ready. All right, let's read. Let, we're ready. Let's do we'll it. do that clockwise here. In colored pencils, colored pencil again. Is. Wait, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so you had colored out. pencils colored last week. Pencils so colored will be pencils will be eliminated okay. after next week. But Ashley will use colored pencils again. I could use the practice. That's kind of a bummer. I kind of wanted you to do something else. <laughs> but it is. We can't cheat the wheel. We can't cheat the we wheel. We have to stick with the our wheel destiny. The wheel can't be cheated. Now, if this lands that's on landscape, right. it is I've got to really remove destiny. that weight out of there. Yeah. If that's it. All right. Then you've All got right. a quarter under there for sure. Ready. <laughs> Clockwise pen oh, here. Colored oh. pencils I and the subject. I hope it's not a vehicle. <laughs> subject <laughs> will be not. Oh, are you Land, kidding me? Something's landscape. wrong with this wheel. No, it's just because I put the weight on there. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Don't All ever right. play dice with Matt. It's got loaded dice. People! He got oh my it. Oh, gosh. He oh, no. got it. Oh, colored pencils the and people. The combination I swear, from you know where. Oh, my goodness. Colored pencils and people. So we expect a full portrait no. in colored pencils next week. <laughs> We're going to get creative. I actually week. had an idea for doing colored pencils yeah. with people that would be quick within 45 minutes and creative we're and you're with. welcome to steal that i might i might because first. we're not we're now not going to use now. colored pencils at all right because that is the second time we have used them um all right colored pencils have been making a strong showing this it uh, is this, they are this season because you use them tonight also but we won't be using them anymore after this next week because mixed media is gone and colored pencils are gone yes um i don't know what's going on here um I'm not really sure what is going on in the studio here. All right, uh, let's go ahead and switch back over here. That's right. We've got to get ready for another show. Yep. All right, guys. Oh, you're seeing me in my full glow. There you go. Um, we, of course, have lots of lights in here. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the last uh, hour. Uh, hopefully hour you stuck around. Plus, and thanks plus. for all of you who stuck around for the entire broadcast tonight. Remember, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also make sure that you like the video. That will help other people find it as well. We're going to head over to thevirtualinstructor.com right now to do our live lesson. Ashley is continuing to lead us in our series where he is working with gouache. And uh, for those of you who are going to join us over there, we'll see you in just a minute. Ashley, do you have anything else to say to the folks? Thank you guys for all of your engaging questions it makes the um it makes the hour pass for me as well as for you guys i hope i see you over at the virtual instructor in the next uh, 20 minutes if not i'll see you here next week absolutely and with that we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening we'll sign out for now and we'll see you guys who are going to join us over for the live lessons in just a minute good night everybody <laughs>